the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. And sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love for they have been from of old. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has remembered us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both the small and the great. We will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they are from old. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace we have with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace among the families of the nations and in coming generations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who rejoice here, for our access by faith into his grace in which we stand, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For your purposeful suffering, rejection, death and resurrection, help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who sent your Son into the flesh so that he might pay for our sin and open eternal life to us, grant us strong faith so that we may purposefully deny ourselves, take up our crosses, and follow where he has led us. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated. Our service of the Word begins today with the Old Testament reading from Genesis chapter 17, selected verses. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, 
and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come fr from you. And I establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her. And she shall become nations, kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. An epistle reading from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God, for while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son. Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the verse in the Gospel reading. If anyone would come after me, lest him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. It's be the basis for our meditation in a moment. When Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way, he asked the disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist. And others say, Elijah. And others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. The calling of the crowd to him, and the calling of the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated. Children, stay where you are for the children's message.
children, I want to tell you a story this morning about a young child about your age. And this child had a really, really peculiar name. The child's name was Sinner. And let me tell you, this child lived up to their name. They were rotten in every sense of the word. They would pick fights on the playground. They would hit people. They would say mean things. They would gossip about people. They would cheat on their homework. They were mean to their teachers and parents. They were a sinner. But something all changed. When they walked into this very room and they took a bath, they took a bath. And this water, the, the pastor sprinkled this water, poured it over them, and all of a sudden, they were washed clean. And once you know, in that instant, their name changed from sinner to Christian. And they started to live up to this name, being kind, caring, saying nice things loving and honoring and respecting their parents and teachers, children. The story I tell is about you. You were that sinner who came in here and were washed by this water, and your name was changed to Christian, and you belong to this family. And so I want to encourage you that every time you enter into this place in which you entered into the family, that, that you might dip your finger in this water, the water that bathed you and gave you a new name. And you can dip your finger in this water and you can make a little cross on your forehead to remind yourself of your great change in identity that was brought through the words of Christ. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for sending your Son to, crucify, to be crucified and to be buried and to ultimately rise again from the dead. And we thank you that through that we have been brought into this family and washed and, and, and are able to share in that resurrection that we have with Christ Jesus our Lord. Help us always to remember that and live by our bath. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus called the crowds and disciples to himself, and they began to push near him. And then Jesus raised his voice above the murmur of the crowd. And he said, if anyone would follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will find it. And the crowds were stunned into silence, perhaps because they didn't know how to respond. Could this teacher really be that serious? Could following him really be that costly? One person that was standing there listening to Jesus' words was a man by the name of Matthias. And Matthias heard these words of self-denial from Jesus, and they began to strike a chord in his heart. They rattled around in his head like some sort of refrain that he just couldn't get out of his head. You see, Matthias had been following Jesus for quite some time now. He had seen Jesus baptized. He had watched Jesus perform miracles. He had heard much of Jesus' teaching. And Jesus was exactly the kind of person that you would want to follow. Because everything he did, everything he said, had a certain indescribable amount of authority, and it confounded everyone who heard it or witnessed his works. And so Matthias kept asking himself, I want to follow this Jesus, but could following him really be that costly? And Matthias would soon find out. Matthias continued to follow Jesus, continued to watch Jesus. And there came a day in a few short months when Matthias watched from afar as Jesus was brought before the Sanhedrin, before a, a mob of angry men. And like a sheep before its shearers is silent, Jesus did not say a word. Even though the accusations that were being hurled at Jesus were mostly fabricated so that they could put this man to death, and yet Jesus denied himself and did not say anything in the face of these accusations. And then Matthias watched from the side of the road as that Jesus carried his cross, beaten, abused, spit on, people throwing rocks at him. And Matthias watched as Jesus carried his own cross. And it rang in his head like some sort of sad and scary refrain. But that all changed for Matthias, because he also witnessed Jesus walk out of that grave and walk away from death itself. And when Matthias saw that, he was convicted that no matter what happened, he would follow this Jesus, even if it came to the ultimate self-denial. And Matthias would soon get that chance, shortly after Jesus ascended into heaven. The disciples, through the power of the Holy Spirit, decided that they needed to elect one more apostle to replace Judas. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, they selected Matthias. And Matthias was excited to hear this news, excited and proud. He felt, felt the glory of being nominated to be one of Jesus' apostles. But he couldn't get that refrain out of his head. And it began to sound to him like some sort of prophecy instead of some sort of empty command. Matthias carried out 
the evangelistic work of an apostle going all throughout the world and faithfully proclaiming the good news that is found in Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior. And that proclamation would ultimately cost Matthias his own life. He even denied his own life when he was brought like Jesus before his accusers. Now, those words of Jesus didn't just have a ripple effect through the lives of his disciples and through the lives of the people who were standing there hearing him that day. They also had a ripple effect through time. There was another man named Polycarp. And now Polycarp wasn't standing there at Jesus' feet when he said these words, but he heard them directly from the mouth of someone who was. St. John the Apostle was standing there next to Jesus to hear this command of self-denial, and he passed everything that Jesus taught on to his student, Polycarp. And these words became so ingrained in Polycarp that he decided that he was going to devote his entire life to the ministry of this Jesus Christ. And so he became a pastor. He became, and he was selected to be a bishop in Smyrna and Asia Minor. And he lived his life devoted to this faith in Jesus Christ his Lord. Even as he grew old, his faith never diminished. At one point... He was offered to consider his old age and then to offer incense to the emperor. And Polycarp responded, Eighty and six years have I served him, and he has never caused me any injury. Why now should I blaspheme against my Lord and my Savior? And for that confession of self-denial, Polycarp was tied to a stake to be burned, but the flames would not touch him. And so his accusers ended up torturing and killing him. And his church, his congregation, was even denied the right to bury his body. And why do I tell you these two stories? Because they are stories of two individuals that were taken from the church calendar just this week. Two shining examples of how the church has honored Jesus' words here from Mark 8. You see, the church has a calendar. And throughout the year, we have feast days, celebrations. And these were glorious celebrations in which they would honor the saints who have gone before them, who have lived lives that were self-sacrificial, lived lives that put Christ above everything else. And often those feast days fall on the days in which those saints were martyred. And we can't help but look at that calendar of hundreds of men and women who have sacrificed so much for the sake of the gospel and look at our own community and wonder, what has changed? Is there something different? Why are these considered feast days when these saints are martyred instead of sad days. What does self-denial look like among this community? Are we more of a people who follow the author of Ecclesiastes and say, that says, whatever my heart desires, I did not keep from it? Or do we follow Jesus and these men and women and deny ourselves? Are we willing to deny ourselves a promotion? Because it might engender in us greed, covetousness. It might take away from time that we get to spend with our friends and family serving in this community. Are we willing to deny ourselves entertainment? 
watching movies, TV shows, going to concerts, ball games, so that we can spend more of our time and our resources serving the community that God has placed us in? Are we willing to go so far as to deny freedoms that we have been given for the sake of the community? To deny ourselves the freedom of going out without a mask on to serve the community around us? Are we willing to deny ourselves health, security, and safety so that we can gather in this community for the mutual support of one another in a time in which we so desperately need it? Are we willing to sign on to Jesus' declaration of dependence, which says we hold these truths to be the word of God, that all who believe in Jesus Christ are endowed with death, self-denial, and eternal life. These words from Jesus sound hard. They sound excruciating. They sound painful. But how is it that Matthias and Polycarp didn't hear the words that way at all? In fact, Polycarp said a prayer right before he was martyred. He said, Father, I thank you that you have considered me worthy of this hour, that I may with all the saints, all the martyrs, share in the cup of Christ. What has changed? Polycarp, Matthias, all the saints that have gone before us have not heard these words of Jesus as some scornful command, but rather as a gracious invitation. This is exactly how it is used in the Gospel of Mark. Jesus says to his disciples and to the crowds, follow me. And when you think about the lives of all the disciples that are gathered there, Jesus individually sought every single one of those out. James, follow me. Peter, follow me. John, follow me. Judas, follow me. But even after Jesus issued this command to follow him, this gracious invitation, he didn't stop there. He continued to invite them to follow him. And we hear it today in our gospel reading. Peter is rebuking Jesus for some of the things that he is saying. And what is one of the next words that Jesus says to him and to all of his disciples? Follow me. Now the struggle is, is a majority of the time, the disciples did not know where he was going. But that all changed when they watched Jesus die, and they watched him walk away from that grave, and then it was as if scales fell from their eyes, and all of a sudden they knew that Jesus' invitation was gracious because it was an invitation to walk from death into life. And this life is not the same sort of life that they were already living. As evidenced by Jesus' ascension into heaven, the life that Jesus was promising to his disciples was a life that was free from sin, a life that was free from death and the cross, a life that was free from temptation. It was indeed a gracious invitation to his disciples. And dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus offers you that same gracious invitation. It started for you in the waters of holy baptism. When Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, leaned down and said, follow me. But it didn't stop there. Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, continues to offer you that gracious invitation every single morning that you wake up. He, he offers you that 
invitation into life to put away the selfish greed, the desire for wealth and status that will quickly fade away, and an invitation into life that is much greater, that is much better, that is secure. And again this morning, he offers you this invitation. Follow me. If anyone is to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And you hear that as a promise to life that is already yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now sing our offertory as the offering is brought forward. Let us pray for the church here and around the world and for all people in their various circumstances. For the church around the world, all people who join Peter in professing that Jesus is the Christ, that they trust God's purpose for their lives, take up their crosses and follow. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who spend their lives serving the physical, mental, social, and emotional needs of the people around them, that God bless and guide them according to his gracious purpose. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For professional counselors and private confidants who alleviate suffering, enable endurance, support character, and encourage hope that they serve as conduits for God's purposes in the lives of their patients, family, and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who lead the governments of the world, that they find purpose in their positions, using every means to increase harvests, combat global health crises, minimize conflict between nations, and ensure equal justice for all their citizens. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For those near and dear to us, especially we lift up before you for healing according to your will, for Livia Struberg, Pat Maupin, Jillian Van Leer, Melva Regal, Bill Zastro, Mary Hamlin. We pray peace and comfort for the Twelker family at uh, Harvey's death and Christian burial. We also pray for Kathy Clammers and family at the death of her cousin Harold. And Lord, we pray for the persecuted church around the world that you would make her strong in your grace and mercy. That God bring about healing, comfort, freedom, and dignity for which they send requests to our gracious Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And Lord, we rejoice with Anthony and Brittany Rott at your gift of a daughter. Uh, keep her safe until she becomes part of your family in the waters of baptism. These and any other things you would have us ask of you, Heavenly Father, grant to us for the sake of the bitter sufferings and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing.